From Galahad to Gilgalad, nerds are passionate about a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Hector Navarro. Hey, everybody, hi. <laughs> Next to him, Ryan Martin. Hey, everybody, hi. <laughs> and Zach Kornfeld. Hey, everyone, hi. I have here a stack of questions. These are false statements for the franchises that are nearest and dearest to your hearts, or if not your hearts, someone's hearts. It's up to you to find the thing that I said wrong and correct me. You have to proceed all your corrections with the phrase, um, actually. If you don't say, um, actually, you won't get the point. Go ahead, grab your buzzers, get comfy. This first question is about Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. In Game of Thrones, House Lannister of Casterly Rock is a wealthy family known by their house words, a Lannister always pays his debts, and also by their sigil, a golden lion on a crimson field. Hector. Um, actually, the saying is, a Lannister always has sex with his sister. It very well could be. They're, they seem to insist that that's totally fine. They insist um, on the incest. But no, no, that's not, not their house words. Um, actually, they're not wealthy. They owe a bunch of money. <laughs> That's pretty good. All their assets have been liquidated. It's like, yeah. it's like, oh, we're very, we see, we're very land wealthy, but <laughs> we're, we're, we're cash poor. Uh, no. Um, actually, sigils a made-up word, and they just call them <laughs> flags. Uh, no. I okay. I'm gonna say that that no one got this one. Yeah. Um, no, boy. Duh. The, the official house words of House Lannister is actually "Hear me roar." It's what? not. It's not a Lannister always pays always pays his debts, even though they say that all the fucking time, and they never say "Hear me roar." Um, actually, it's uh, "Hear me roar" right before I have sex with my sister. It's yeah. the full <laughs> thing. <laughs> that's that's the full version. You cut they, it just, off. they always abridge it. But I just like, want to make sure for the fans out there. That's the full. That makes sense. Okay, yeah. so yeah, yeah. That sh show is too damn convoluted already. <laughs> so I'm not gonna pay attention to the minutia. This is our next question about Star Wars. And Ryan's ears perk up. The character of Anakin Skywalker, perhaps better known as Darth Vader, has appeared in every Star Wars movie except one, The Force Awakens. The first six films basically serve as his life story in which he's portrayed by no less than four actors, including Jake Lloyd, Hayden Christensen, James Earl Jones, and briefly at the end of Return of the Jedi, David Prowse. Um, actually, Darth Vader did appear in The Force Awakens. No, only his helmet, just his helmet popping in there. But, but like, the helmet's so iconic like, that you kind of think that's that that's That's basically him. the character, right? Uh, no. Um, actually, did you say portrayed? I did say portrayed. Because James Earl Jones only did the voice. That's true, and, I don't um, know, I don't at, know how they, Yeah, you know. uh, we, we certainly yeah, expected someone, it, someone to make know. that point, but you know what, I'm, like, voice acting is, is an important portrayal mm -hmm, of the character. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna disagree. <laughs> I'm saying it now, voice actors aren't actors. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to know this. I'm supposed to. I see to. Ryan, like, kicking a, it's, a, your, your search you just, you have such a confidence when you read the question oh, no, that I don't yeah. want to believe that you're lying sure, to me. Yeah. You know, that's how I get through life. I say a lot of things that I know are not true and just say it confidently and hope no one will stop me on it. I'm a beautiful man. Um, actually, there's a fifth actor who portrayed him who was not, David Prowse was his, was his face. Mm -hmm. There was another man in the suit, and I cannot remember yep. his name. That is exactly what we're going for. Okay, nice I couldn't. I was waiting for his name to come. I will, I'll, I'll give you the point unless someone else can swoop in here and tell me that man's name. He was a British actor, probably super tall guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead and give you the point. It was Sebastian Shaw. Ah, Sebastian Shaw, Shaw. Um, uh, is is the one who appears at the end. David Prowse is the body actor for most of it. They made that guy fucking sweated out in that leather suit for three movies, and then uh, when it was finally like, you know what, let's take the mask off and see your face. Not his face. But what a bod. What a bod, look at that guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, a real dad bod. <laughs> <laughs> I am your, whatever, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and this next one is about Marvel. Marvel. In Thor Ragnarok, the eponymous Asgardian makes a throwaway reference to his adopted brother Loki turning him into a frog. This moment actually does occur in Walt Simonson's run on Thor, with the main character returning to his true form only after reclaiming his hammer Mjolnir. Um, actually, only a tender kiss can return Thor to his true form. No, that's not, you're, you're, you're dancing on the thing that's wrong, but you're, you don't have the thing that is wow, correct. Wow, so that was totally bullshitted. Yeah. Um, actually, I would kiss Thor. Well, sure. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's, but that wasn't in question here. No. Um, actually, after defeating some evil rats in Central Park as mm. a frog, Thor was turned back into his human form by his trickster brother Loki. That's correct. It's not that reclaiming Mjolnir uh, turns him back. He's got, he's got other things to do. He has to go uh, deal with Loki still in frog form. And in fact, we have a lovely image <sighs> Uh, hopefully that we can show you here. <laughs> there is uh, Frog Thor. Uh, what's more, the power of the Where comics. Where did he find that tiny helmet? <laughs> <laughs> or is he a giant frog? 
No, he's uh, he's still a tiny frog, but I don't actually know that much about Frog Thor. H Hector, it sounds like you know at least a little bit more. What's yeah, he's colloquially known as Throg. Okay. Uh, big fan favorite. <laughs> right. He's recently joined the Pet Avengers, because okay. there's a bunch of other uh, pet characters Shut in the Marvel up. Universe. And uh, yeah, as far as explaining his tiny helmet, I think just all of him and his clothes were shrunk down on top of being turned into it's a like frog. It's like Hulk pants rules. Yes. <laughs> you guys are yeah, blowing my like... mind right now. Also, look how hot that frog is. He is ripped. Yeah, but he lost <laughs> his hair. <laughs> well, that is a point for Hector, and wow. um, we'll move on. Good job. Great. This next question is, is, uh, is about The Wizard of Oz, the movie The Wizard of Oz. In The Wizard of Oz, Margaret Hamilton delivers a line to her flying monkeys, I've sent a little insect on ahead to take the fight out of them. This seems like it makes no sense until you remember that the spooks referenced in the movie are technically insects. Um, actually, it doesn't seem to not make sense. It does not make sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of true. You're actually like kind of on the right track, even though I know you're joking. Um, actually, it's. I'm gonna be more confident with okay. my fake answer. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. Um, actually, it's not insects on a head. It's fleas in a shopping bag. Uh, no, <laughs> that is incorrect. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, she was referring to Toto, who people forget was actually a sleeper agent the entire time <laughs> and was working for the Wicked Witch. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's, that's not what we're going for either. That line, I've sent a little insect on ahead of them to take the fight of them, that actually refers to a deleted scene uh, in which all the characters do the jitterbug uh, due, due to the influence of a character called the jitterbug. Even though they cut that scene, they left that line in there um, uh, just hoping people would, I guess, gloss over it or forgetting that it was there. And you kind of do, because it's like, that doesn't make any sense, so I'm going to forget that it exists. So you're telling me Modern Dance made it to Oz? The Jitterbug was very popular uh, yeah. at the time, and they were like, you know, for the kids, let's have a little like Jitterbug dance scene. That's like having crumping in the middle of your <laughs> Oz movie. It is, it's ludicrous. Yeah, just be like, it's like, what if all these characters dabbed now, you know? <laughs> and this brings us to our very first shiny question. Shiny? Shiny questions. Shiny questions are just like shiny Pokemon in that they are pretty much exactly the same. They're just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. So in just a moment here, we're gonna have uh, someone come and bring you some boards for a game we call Order Up. Now, fantasy literature is filled with fantasy locations and few locations conjure the feel of sword and sorcery more than castles. We'll have five castles on this board uh, that I want you to arrange in alphabetical order by their name. First person to buzz in with the correct order will get the point. And begin. Um, actually, trick question, these are all Hogwarts. <laughs> There's a scene from different angles. Yeah. Like, you know, like the staircases move around, like uh -huh. sometimes walls fall away. And... I'm I, I reckon that's Hogwarts, that's Hogwarts right there. <laughs> so they all gotta be Hogwarts. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm gonna say it anyway. Sure, yeah. it's fun. Sure. Uh, I know that Hogwarts and Minas Tirith are on there. I just don't know what the other three are. Okay. <laughs> so you've got A Castle, Hogwarts, M Cat, nope. L Castle, Minas Tirith, and Z Castle. <laughs> that is uh, not correct. But you are you, you did correctly identify two of those castles. Um, all right, Hector, what do we have here? First up, we've got Hogwarts, mm. pretty famous. And then we've got um, Jogwarts, which comes next. <laughs> and then Minas Tirith from The Lord of the Rings, uh -huh. obviously. And then we have this castle, which is from, uh, called, uh, it's Wonder Woman Castle from Themyscira. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, Zogwarts at the end right there, so <laughs> nailed it. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. See, the problem is that I look like a nerd, but I'm actually just an idiot. <laughs> I just, I don't know anything. There's slightly bigger pictures on the screen, if that helps at all. Oh, it doesn't. doesn't. Mm -hmm. No, no, it well, doesn't. hey, here we are, I don't know. Uh, Do you have smaller pictures? <laughs> we can get you some smaller pictures if you want. If we could shrink this down just a little bit. <laughs> if anyone can can name me one more castle, I'll go ahead and give you the point, otherwise we'll, we'll move on here. Narnia. You're in the right world, but that's not the name of the castle. Oh. Narnia Castle. Oh, that's the the White Queen's castle. Uh, it's not the, the White Aslan's Queen's castle. Aslan's castle. Uh, well, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and reveal Mr. the answers Tumnus's here. Castle. Winterfell. Yeah. yeah so you're right. Winterfell. There, there is a Game of Thrones one there, but it's the wrong one. That the the Monty Python looking castle. That dreary gray castle. Uh, you got Hogwarts and Minas Tirith. 
Uh, the first one is uh, Ker Paravel. That's the castle from uh, from Narnia. Uh, that is oh. uh, that is where uh, the Pevensies rule Narnia at, uh, at the end of at the end of uh, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Wow. Are they still and making those movies, or they just kind of gave up? I at feel some like point? they gave up, right? Yeah. <laughs> but then they then they gave in again, and then they gave up again. Yeah. Who's and the answer Gormen was Gast I don't from? know. Gormenghast is from Gormenghast. <laughs> oh, Gormenghast. Oh, Gormenghast. Oh, <laughs> you noticed some mistakes that we made in the last episode, and here they are. From our dropout Discord, Marak says, Um, actually, while Murph's Rivendell sticker wasn't near the one on the answer key, Rivendell is on the western side of the Misty Mountains and very close to where he placed the sticker. He should have gotten the point and the win. Very well, one point for Marak and one point for Murph, who will never watch this. Rhyme Fighter says, um, actually, Juggernaut is a title. While it's true, Kane Marco is not a mutant. Previous Juggernauts include Colossus, born with the X gene. That's correct, and sorry to everyone else who had a similar correction, I'm giving this one to Crime Fighter. After a spirited debate between Android 22 and Ian Adams, it seems that at least in Season 1, the Gargoyles only protected Manhattan and not the Outer Boroughs. That's one point for both Android 22 and Ian Adams, and no Gargoyles for Brooklyn. Our next one is about um, Steven Universe. The crystal gems have the ability to form fusions, combining their bodies and souls together through emotional harmony with each other, often accompanied by a ritualized dance. Non-fusion gems like garnet, pearl, and amethyst can combine to make use of the extreme power and size of the fusions, but also just to express their love and affection for each other. Um, actually, that sounds very sweet and delightful, and I don't know what's wrong with it, but it sounds fun. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> Trick question, there's nothing wrong with it. Eat it. Uh, no, no, they're, um, it does sound sweet and delightful. Hector. Um, actually, they're not aliens. They are aliens. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that would be something we would do, though. Just, like, slide that in right at the top, like a big fucking monologue at the, uh, afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I only watch this show when I'm stoned, and there's no way you can expect me to remember anything about that it. That is correct, but I can't give you the point for that. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and give you the answer. What I, I said uh, non-fusion gems like garnet, pearl, and amethyst, but garnet already is a fusion. Garnet is a fusion of ruby and sapphire. Uh, yeah, that is the correct response to every question uh, <laughs> on this show is, God, come on, what are you talking about? Um, yeah, you know, your friend is just already two people. Nice. Well, there you go. From South Park to Class Action Park, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is watching way too much content. I'm Mike Trapp, and here's an um actually for you. HBO Max is a streaming platform that features content from HBO, DC Comics, Studio Ghibli, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, Crunchyroll, Turner Classic Movies, Looney Tunes, and The Sesame Workshop. Did you find what was wrong? Um actually, it doesn't have, uh, Oh, no, no, wait, actually, I guess it does have all that stuff. That's, that's a lot of stuff to watch. Anyway, the holidays are going to look a little different this year. That's why we partnered with HBO Max to make sure that you're aware of all the geeky, bingeable series and the huge variety of movies that are available on the platform right now. As I watch stuff on HBO Max all the time, it's actually been like a really great way to research for the show because there's so much stuff on there that I know are the gaps in my geek knowledge. They have the entire Studio Ghibli catalog. Things like Doctor Who, Adventure Time, The Lego Movie. If you're a Stephen King fan, they've got The Outsider. If you're a comedy fan, you have to check out Stathlet's Flats. So get cozy this holiday season. Snuggle up in a big old blanket. Get binging. Go to HBOMax.com right now. Now, Back to the show. This is about Jurassic Park. We've got Jurassic Park here. Although many of the park security measures fail, perhaps the most alarming failure is found by Dr. Grant when he discovers a batch of hatched dinosaur eggs, indicating that the male and female dinosaur populations have breached each other's paddocks. Hector. Um, actually, there weren't male and female dinosaurs. There were only female dinosaurs that then life found a way and they started turning into male dinosaurs as some reptiles do in the wild. Boom. That is correct and even includes a quote from the movie. Uh, it could not be more correct. That is a point for Hector. And also, I'm um, actually, real quick, I think there's a really cool little foreshadowing moment that people found and put it online in the past oh, couple yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Seat belt. The seat belts, man. The two female ends of the seat belt in the beginning yeah. that Dr. Alan Grant ties together. Life finds a way. Yeah, I think that's great. That is great. Can I say, um, actually, did we ever confirm that there was a male dinosaur on the island, or we just know that the female 
the females found a way. That's we never true. actually confirmed that there was a male dinosaur on the island. But that, that maybe the female dinosaurs just started reproducing? Yeah. All right, we will move on to this question about the Incredibles. Syndrome, the villainous alter ego of Buddy Pine, meets his untimely demise at the hands, or rather claws, of his own Omnidroid, which targets him and his remote control as a threat during the staged fight in the city of Metroville. Um, Hector was right there, but Ryan, hmm. Ryan came in at the last second. Um, actually, he's defeated by Jack-Jack at the end. Um, that, I, I guess, like, can you be more specific? Ultimately, did stop listening at some point to say that, <laughs> so I don't know, I don't know what else is in that question. <laughs> That's very in the spirit of the game. Well, um, um, actually, I just jumped in because you didn't press the buzzer. <laughs> I, I, gotta, I gotta play dirty here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, Jack-Jack is what caused the robot thingy to go after him. Like, he uh, used his heat vision thingy. That's also not what we're going for, Hector. Um, actually, in the end, he was defeated by his cape. That's correct. No capes. No capes. No capes. He gets sucked into a jet engine because of his cape. I wish I could get away with wearing a cape in, in everyday society. Like, I think you could pull it off. Oh, thank you. They're thank you so they're like much. They're like fashion capes. You know what? Let's, uh, if we could order a cape for me right now, let's, yeah. let's just go ahead. Let's like try that out. That was mean. Somebody pantomimed and went like this. Yeah. And there's no <laughs> computer there. That was really mean that somebody did that. They're like... <laughs> This will bring us to our second shiny question. This is a game called What's Wrong With This Picture? Now in just a moment, we're gonna put an image on this screen with something wrong with it. It's up to you identify what's wrong and correct me. Let's go ahead and see that image. I'm actually... Yeah. Nah, I don't know. I don't feel good about this. <laughs> <laughs> those little things up top, those aren't lights. That's where the lasers come out of. That, that is pew. incorrect. That's not what we're looking for. It goes like pew. <laughs> Ryan. Um, actually, there's no hyperdrive on this readout. You're, you're correct. You're correct enough. There's, uh, there's a warp drive here, but warp drive is Star Trek. Oh, it does seem. Got it. Uh, it is hyperdrive yes. in, in Star Wars, uh, not a warp drive, which is... Very, very picky. I think you maybe just didn't see that and happened to stumble not. on I the just right didn't thing. See but that's nice. it. That's it. You got the point. There's the oh, hyper. I see. The hyper drive. Yeah. The, what is labeled as a warp drive should be labeled oh, a hyper drive. Tell that you changed the font. Mm -hmm. mm. Should have looked for that. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, it all becomes clear out. now. Now, we're not perfect here either, and we make mistakes too. If you notice something that we got wrong and you want to correct us, tweet at um actually show. And tell us what we got wrong. You might even get a point. This question is about Harry Potter. Harry Potter. The character of Albus Dumbledore, played by Richard Harris and Michael Gambone in the films, is not the only character to be played by more than one actor. Katie Bell, Angelina Johnson, Pansy Parkinson, and Peeves the Poltergeist were all recast between the seven films. Um, actually, yes. uh, Peeves was not in uh, the film series. That's correct. There's no Peeves in the movie. Prominently featured in the books, uh, not at all anywhere in the movie. Though other, other ghosts get their time to shine. I thought Peeves was a cat. <laughs> there, there is a cat. Crookshanks. Crookshanks. Yeah, that's a good you name. You're thinking of pet peeves. Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> I got yeah. it. Yeah. You said peeves, and for some reason, just like an old white British guy popped in my head. I'm like, yeah, yeah, he was in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you're thinking of G's. Just, just, yeah. mm. I ask him everything. Yeah. <laughs> this is a question about Lord of the Rings. In Lord of the Rings, Frodo ultimately comes to hold the powerful one ring when his grandfather, Bilbo Baggins, leaves it for him on the mantle. Ryan. Um, um, actually, uh, Bilbo is not Frodo's grandfather. That's correct. Can you be more specific? He's his uncle, great uncle. Um, shoot, I don't know this. I'm okay with yeah. uncle because he's referred to as Uncle Bilbo throughout. But there is def there's a more specific, more correct familial relationship between Bilbo and Frodo. So if anyone can swoop in here and tell me what that is, I'll give you the point. Otherwise, I'll give it to Ryan. Um, Hector. actually, yes. they are cousins. Can you be more specific? Yes, they are first cousins twice removed. Uh, they, uh, they are, uh... uh Second that cousins thrice removed. I'm sorry. No. Sick. Shit. No, 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 no. Um, actually, Bilbo is Frodo's butler, and Frodo <laughs> saw his parents murdered in an alleyway after a play. So it's like a father figure thing, but really he works for him. Mm -hmm. I think you're thinking of a uh, famous superhero, Batman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm actually, no, I'm definitely <laughs> thinking of Lord of the Rings. So I'm gonna give Ryan the point there. They are actually first and sec second cousins once removed either way. Mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, his paternal 
great great uncle's son's son's uh, son and his maternal great aunt's son. We'll accept uncle uh, because that's what he's referred to. We've also accepted father because he's kind of his adoptive father. And you know, father, it's not about blood. It's about like being there for your for your child hey, when absolutely. they need it. You know, giving them rings of power when it is appropriate. All those things. Guidance, leadership. Trying to grab the back when you regret giving it away. Sure. This is our last shiny question, a game we call Crypto Geography. Monster folklore comes to us from all around the world. Match the monster to its place of origin on the big map and win a point. Make sense? Cool. Let's go. Let's go ahead and flip these around and let's see what we got here. Okay. All right. Let's start with the Wendigo over here. That should be placed in Canada. Done. Uh, oh, so that, that's one it. for Hector. Thanks, Wolverine uh, Comics. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Jackalope should be in the American Southwest. It looks like all Boom. three of you got that one. The Pishtaco. This guy's from Peru. Did anyone wow. get this one? I put Russia. Yeah, Pishtako is a uh, is a basically a, a white guy who's a vampire who sucks your fat out. Um, nice. Uh, you know what's funny? I didn't look at the names, and now I'm seeing that that could have helped. I <laughs> yeah, just looked at, he looked there, like he was wearing a European cloak. There like, are some like linguistic uh, 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 hints in the in the names for sure. Uh, the Kraken. Uh, the Kraken is from Norway. Um, mm. And looks like we've got s a lot of things are sort of floating out in the ocean. I mean, that totally makes sense. Like, if, if you're Vikings, the you're ocean traveling outside around. outside of Norway, I couldn't fit both. I mean, these like, three say, like, right in the middle of the Atlantic. I put, like, like, yeah. Euro like, uh, like coming from Europe y, so. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to say no points for that, but I'm I, say I, Zach got I it. appreciate the. Uh, uh, I feel good on that. I think Zach got it. You know what? We'll go ahead. We'll give that one to Zach. <laughs> we'll give a video. <laughs> you no, know, he kind of fell. It's a magnet. Um, the Hydra. Uh, is from Greece, yep, and nailed it. you're all roughly in the Greece area. I think Hector's still in the lead here. The Ninki Nanka, that is from Zambia. Ooh. Wow. Zambia. Ooh. No, Did, is no, 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 India. no, no I thought it was Japan for sure. Nope, that is Zambia, so no one for that one. Uh, the Ifrit or the Ifrit, depending on how you want to pronounce it, that's from Saudi Arabia. Yes. Um, Definitely put the Middle East, dude. Yeah, I okay. can't fake that one. I think. <laughs> <laughs> got uh, Hydra because of Hercules, and I got Ifrit because of Aladdin, so thank you, Disney. All right. Uh, I, I have no idea how to pronounce it. The Keelin, or maybe Chi Keelin. Quilin. Quilin. That is from uh, China. Uh, so we have. I thought for sure he was Brazilian. Look how like beautiful he is. He He's just like he, had, he looks like a party animal. You know what I mean? You can see there's, there's, like, there's like those flamey things. Got that kind of like Chinese dragon kind of kind of feel over uh, over in the uh, in the joints. Uh, and I'm pretty sure everyone got the drop bear, which is a little bit of a gimme. But there's your drop bear, carnivorous um, koala bears. Those are of course from Australia. Wow. I think Hector uh, Hector got, got those. Yeah, so that will be one point for Hector. Well, this brings us to our final question. Which our I heard is worth six, seven points. It's uh, still only worth mm -hmm. one point, but it is perhaps the most important question because unlike all the other questions, this one concerns real life skills. <laughs> the Federal Trade Commission requires that nearly every piece of clothing you buy comes with instructions for proper care. Many of these take the form of symbols, such as the square to indicate dry cleaning, the triangle to indicate bleach, and the circle in the square to indicate tumble drying. Things like this. Action. Okay. Well, um, actually, I don't think that the square is for dry cleaning. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. Can you be more? Yeah, I don't think there is a symbol for dry cleaning. I think it's just you don't wash it. Uh, that is incorrect. Uh, <laughs> there, there is a circle. There is, a, there is a symbol for dry cleaning. But I got it mostly right. I'll give you the point. I'll give you the point. Uh, the, uh, the symbol for dry cleaning is a circle, not a square. I only know that because I ruin all my clothes. <laughs> I don't read it. There have been so many things that I'm just like, I could probably go in the dryer, right? <laughs> Real talk, why don't they teach this in school? This would be yep. very helpful to have at home. I yep. don't have this sheet. An extra point, if anyone can explain how dry cleaning works. <laughs> you throw it in and hope it comes back. <laughs> <laughs> it's just chemicals. It's just like, uh, it's just, just like, chemicals. it's just clothes dipped in like a big vat of chemicals. And there's like, there's actually specific, um, the uh, the circle you know does mean dry cleaning and there's some like these like some of the there's some symbols that are like circles with uh, uh, specific things in them that are like do use this chemical don't use this chemical wow. that don't apply to you but yeah just 
throwing your clothes in a big vat of stuff and letting it letting it air dry, basically. And that's our game. Uh, our final score here: uh, four points each for Hector and Ryan. Uh, one point, perhaps the most important point. Thank you uh, for for Zach. I love a redemption story. And that's it for our episode. Join us next time for even more hyper-specific pedantic corrections on Um Actually. Yeah.